Hi, it's a question many of you have. Is a third wave coming? If yes, when? Who will be most affected? Children? My name is Anupa Bhusle and we'll attempt to give you an accurate science fact picture that's based on expert opinions and global trends. A request here, if this work has been worthy of your time, please consider making a contribution to help us do more. The link for that is in the bio or in the description. So let's get started. There is no denying that there is some relief compared to the hellish frenzy of April. By some measures, the second wave of COVID-19 is stabilizing. The caveats, well, they apply. We're talking strictly urban India. There are still over one lakh cases every day, and we know these are underestimates, so there's simply no space to drop our guard. But if you ask an expert without any governmental association whether a third wave is coming, the answer is going to be a simple, unfazed, Yes, pandemics usually come in waves and because pathogens, in this case viruses, mutate as they spread, some mutations make them more transmissible, even more infectious, even more deadly and resistant to vaccines. Now, after the first wave, India did little to make sure this replication was slowed down, which is how we got the highly transmissible variant found in India coined the Delta variant by the WHO. It is now the dominant strain in the country and it is believed to be one of the driving forces behind the second wave. So should a similar variant of concern emerge and let's say coincide with an unlocked India, a third wave will come our way, experts say. Now the timing is uncertain. The principal scientific advisor K. Vijay Raghavan said as much on 5th May, he said that a third wave was inevitable, but he could not predict when. 24 hours later, instead of inevitable, he said it can be prevented. Now he is right. If adequate precautions are exercised, mass vaccination is at the top of the list, we could prevent it. But remember, only to an extent. The UK that has fully vaccinated more than 37% of its population is seeing a rise in cases again. In fact, a scientist advising the government told the BBC this week that there are warning signs a third wave is coming in that country. Thanks to the Delta variant, which reduces vaccine efficacy to some extent against symptomatic COVID-19. Now the difference is, should a third wave come in UK and India, it may be far less deadly in the UK because of their vaccination coverage. Now remember, all vaccines still are effective at preventing severe COVID-19 that requires hospitalization, whether the new variant or not. But should it come to India, while our vaccination drive continues on, let's say, today's trajectory, the third wave could be just as unforgiving as the second, if not more. Now. This is not just an India problem. The Delta variant has spread to 60 countries, the World Health Organization says. India, the biggest vaccine manufacturer, has stopped exports, which has left 91 countries and their people in their lurch. So this may actually translate to a global third wave, though countries like the US, UAE, Israel and UK will possibly surf this wave better with less fatalities. Before I end, a lot of you are extremely worried that the third wave may impact children more. The Supreme Court has asked about the government's plans to protect children from the third wave. In fact, many states in India are setting up pediatric task forces. Experts have suggested setting up special pediatric COVID-19 ICUs that cater to roughly about 5% of the child population. Now, all of these details could be interpreted as a confirmation for parents that children may be disproportionately affected in the third wave. It is not completely unfounded, but the thing to note here is, as the virus moves through a population, it looks for people who have not been infected and not been vaccinated. With the first wave, we mostly saw the elderly affected. 
When the second wave came, the elderly were still at high risk, but we observed the virus impacting the 30 to 45 group more. So when the third wave comes, there is a chance a new demographic will be hit more severely than it was before. But concerns that children are the next demographic are not yet based on scientific evidence, many experts say. This includes the AIMS director, Randeep Guleria, the Niti Aayog health member, Mr. V.K. Paul, and the Indian Academy of Pediatrics. Now, a number of countries have already experienced three or even four waves of this pandemic. Some could say even states like Delhi, in a sense. There has been no pattern to suggest children are at an additional risk during subsequent COVID-19 waves. The patterns we are seeing are actually hopeful. Children are mostly asymptomatic carriers. A very small percentage are mildly symptomatic and fewer cases result in hospitalization. Now, in waves one and two, children who got infected got the virus from older people in their families. That means they were not the patient number zero. So you'd, want, you'd wonder actually, how did this sense get projected that the third wave will hit children disproportionately? Well, number one, there have been more COVID infected children in the second wave than in the first. But remember, the overall cases in the country also increased by almost four to six fold and they sustained for a few weeks. So the rise in cases among children was also proportional to the overall increase in cases. Second, countries like, let's say, the US and Canada have recently begun vaccinating children. Now, there is little sense in us here in India mimicking this because remember, they're worried because their people below 18 will be the only age group that will be unvaccinated, leaving them vulnerable. Now, India is far from that point. We are yet to vaccinate all the elderly, all the disabled, all the pregnant women, all the healthcare and frontline workers who are all demonstrably more vulnerable to the virus than children. So parents, experts are saying your children are not disproportionately more at risk when the third wave comes. Vaccine trials are of course on for children and adolescents, though there is no clarity on when they will end or when they will get approval. There are also talks of importing the Pfizer's vaccine, which works for children above 12. Until then, the best thing parents can do is get vaccinated themselves and of course, inculcate COVID-19 appropriate behavior like masks, all the hygiene, social distancing, and lead by example. I'll stop here. I'm Anupab Hosley, Pallavi and self-run Newsworthy. We believe in news, not noise. We believe in context, not conflict. If this has been worthy, do drop a message, share this video with your friends and family, and consider making a small contribution. I'll see you very soon.